Up next, our review of Stormy Weather after this. Hello out there, I'm the oldest nerd, and you might know, uh, even if you had not seen the credit, that Jonathan Frakes directed this episode of Star Trek Discovery, which is called Stormy Weather. In the show, what happens is Discovery and crew go into a rift in subspace, which is caused by the DMA, and they're hoping in going into it, they would be able to find some kind of signature that would indicate just... Uh, where it came from and who made it. And so far, none of that was able to be gathered, but uh, they find themselves uh, as a fly stuck in amber and uh, have uh, to find out their way of getting out. So uh, it is um, very useful in telling a number of stories. We, uh, we find out more about Book, his relationship with his father, his guilt about his own people. Uh, we think about guilt, generally speaking, when people are in a situation in which they don't know how to cope with fear of not being successful or otherwise. Uh, we also have a, a situation where... Um, we once again point out the commandability of Burnham and of Saru. Uh, all of these are put together there. Um, we see a role for Gray, who uh, felt a little bit um, useless in the story, at the very first at least, and, uh, and to a certain extent, book as well. We see some of our regular bridge crew this time around. Um, we found out that uh, the reason that they are not in every episode now is because of COVID concerns on set uh, so that uh, each cast member can only spend a certain amount of time uh, on camera. And uh, therefore, uh, we see a lot of the crew being rotated out and they made in... Uh, a couple of episodes ago, uh, the requirement that uh, everybody take some um, time off in order to deal with the stresses of the mission. So uh, it works in universe and out of universe for that. Uh, as for Frank's direction, uh, I noted um, a very um, uh, interesting thing. I don't think I've seen it in any Star Trek before where they use split screen techniques. Uh, these are where you have uh, scenes happening simultaneously uh, in uh, different panels of the screen. And uh, in doing so, uh, it reminds me a little bit of... Um, caper movies, uh, although it was not intended to do this way, but I do like uh, the effect. It shows that there's a lot of things going on all at once, not just one thing. And uh, it really does uh, lead to the understanding that uh, it takes an entire crew to run this ship. It's not just one person. It's not just a couple. A couple of things that uh, I noticed also um, that uh, they threw in here that uh, will perhaps not be Easter eggs, but do call back to other shows. Um, the uh, hole in space that was uh, found in the original series. This was not the same kind of thing. It was a radiation field in that time. And uh, perhaps it is this as well, but uh, this uh, hole in space idea where um, Spock goes with a shuttlecraft into it uh, is, uh, is reminiscent uh, uh, from this episode. We've seen what happens when the spore drive fails and uh, uh, Book was uh, injured. Uh, we won't go into details of what that injury was or how it worked itself out in the episode, but uh, this was another self-contained episode, and it seems to be the trend now. The story arc is about the DMA, but the individual stories still stand on their own, and I believe this one especially so. Uh, they mentioned the transporter buffer. Uh, this was used in relics in um, Next Generation, most Notably, it's been used in other places uh, where uh, people would be suspended in transit. That's what they called it in the original series in 
the um, next generation, uh, the transporter buffer was used for uh, other purposes to cure diseases and to go way beyond what uh, a transporter should be able to do. So they kind of played that down. Uh, the one that comes to mind is when uh, uh, they re resequenced um, Dr. Pulaski's DNA. Circulating in a transporter buffer over a period of time was done by Scotty in relics. So uh, that uh, is something that was not completely safe, but not absolutely the most dangerous thing either. And then um, I, I noted in a, in a couple of things that their use of sonar. Uh, now, uh, yes, this is in fact a 20th century um, type of technology, uh, but they used it and the feeling of discovery being kind of a submarine in unknown waters was very... Um, prescient at that point. And so that's some of the things that we noticed uh, about this episode. Uh, I was on the edge of my seat. I uh, was a little emotional in some of the places where we were intended to be. It was manipulative, of course, but uh, uh, it, it shows that we care about these characters and that uh, we um, can identify with these characters, and that's the best Star Trek that you can do. And uh, kudos to Jonathan Frakes and a good acting job by everyone on the cast, including some of the semi-regulars we don't see all the time, like Dr. Pollard uh, were there as well. So, and, and Grudge, we see Grudge again. Anytime you see Grudge, it's always gonna be a good one, right? So we ask that you subscribe to this channel. It doesn't cost anything and does uh, the channel quite a bit of good. You also click on the bell and uh, you'll know when the next video comes your way. During the next week or so, we'll be doing multiple videos. So uh, we hope that you'll be able to keep up with that if you're not too busy during your holiday. At any rate, thank you for joining us from Farpoint Studio. And until next time, don't go far.